Hi there, thanks again for joining us on The Little Things. Today, we're gonna talk a little bit about setting goals. I know that you guys are you're creative. As hairstylists, we like to create. We just like people to feel good and look good. But to be successful, I mean, really successful behind the chair, it takes setting goals. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So we already know tracking your numbers is vital to the success of, of your career and your paycheck. So you wanna write down your goals. What are your goals? Is your goals to uh, buy a new house, buy a new car, send your kids to school or to a college? Is it um, just to have some extra money in your, in your wallet? Is it to be a $100,000 take home pay stylist? Not including your tips, whatever it is, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about how to get there. So what are the most important numbers to actually look at? First of all, increasing your average ticket. Why is this important? What is this? This is how much each customer, each of your guests pays. How do you get that average ticket up? You add on services, add on color, maybe just PC little highlights, add on conditioning treatments, huge. Or you can add on waxing, eyebrow waxes, why their colors on, takes you no extra time whatsoever. Or you could raise your prices. That'll make your average ticket go up. You also want the number of clients to always be going up. Uh, ask for referrals from every single person. You always want this number to go up because your client base is always changing. People move away, people die, people salon hop, people go to other stylists, whatever the case may be. You raised your prices and they can't afford you anymore, whatever the case may be. So you always want that number going up. Number of client visits per year. How you achieve this is by pre-booking. You want to try to pre-book at least half of the people that's leaving your, sh your chair. The reason why, you want to see them more often. You want to see them. This can take you from seeing them 10 times a year instead of just seven or eight times a year. That is hugely significant. Then your average retail ticket, your average retail ticket. This is the most profitable part of the salon business. You have to sell something to every guest or at least get in the habit of offering. Just tell you don't have to sell. You just have to educate them and tell them what you're using. Everybody wants to know what the magic potion is. Just tell them what you're using and why you're using it. Then let them decide if that's going to be for them. Client retention, huge, huge, huge number. What this is, is your clients coming back. How can you make this number go up? You guarantee everything you do you guarantee your work you guarantee your products you guarantee everything you want them to be happy and you want your customer experience to be fabulous and we'll do a whole other video on what a customer experience actually looks like because it starts before they even come into the salon and we'll get to that to be busy you might wonder how many clients do i really need you need at least 300 clients to consider yourself busy yeah, that's a lot of people because think about it. You've got some people who only come in twice a year for that balayage, low maintenance look. And you've got some people who come in every three to four weeks. Your number one job as a stylist, your number one thing that you should be looking at is retention. Did you know that the national average for retention is only 30%? That means three out of 10 people actually come back to the salon this is looking at after their third appointment. That's basically like putting a sign on your door that says, hey, come on in here. 70% of you though won't be coming back. That's terrible. It is up to us to make the experience so wonderful that they, they are raving fans and they'll tell everybody about you. And again, we'll make a video on that so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. So if you want more, you gotta do more. And so how do you keep your customers coming back? You make your clients feel very special, like they are the most important person in the room because they are. You wanna make sure that they know that they can count on you to do your best. 
You need to be available for them, especially at the beginning of your career. You need to be available when they need you. And yeah, that's a lot. Sometimes it's coming in early, sometimes it's staying late. But at the beginning of your career, you can't afford not to be available. I know there's a lot out there that says, hey, make your own hours, only work when you want to work. But beginning of your career, you need to be working. You need to pay 100% of your attention on the guest in the chair. Don't be on your phone. Don't answer your phone. Don't, don't go up to the front desk. You need to pay 100% of your attention to the guest in your chair. Make them feel so special. And then again, you wanna guarantee everything, everything. When you're on the floor, every day that you come in to work, you wanna set your goals. You wanna set your goals, and here are some of the things that you might want to be looking at. And, you know, some good goals to get you started. So week one, you want to have 40% of your guests buying product. We used to call that care factor in our salon. Um, that means that four out of 10 people are walking out of the salon with something in their hand. It could be a travel size, it could be a diffuser, it could be a brush, it could be an eyeshadow. They need to be having something in their hand or it could be six products, wouldn't that be great? Your, another goal would be to get 10 new clients in your chair a week, especially starting out, 10 new guests in your chair. You wanna pre-book 50% of your guests. That means that one out of two people pre-book for their next appointments. You want to increase your average ticket by 20%. So say if, the, if um, their ticket was $100, you want to try to get that to $120. Just make it your goal. You want to hand out 20 business cards a week. I know, old school business cards, but business cards are changing. You can make your business card just have like a QR code on it, and that QR code could just go to your Instagram account. But get your name out in front of people. Hand your cards out to waitresses, bartenders, massage therapists, dry cleaners, um, Grubhub drivers, I don't know. Everybody you come in contact with needs to have your card. Leave your cards in the bathrooms if you don't want to hand them out personally to people. Leave them in the bathroom when you go to the bathroom at restaurants, things like that. 20% of your services a day should be add-on services. That means if you have, just to make easy math, um, $1,000 in services, 200 of that should be add-on services. Um, or maybe you just have a $100 day, then $20 should be add-on services, maybe just one eyebrow wax. And then also you, you need to show up 100% of the time. You need to show up. Don't call in sick. Don't be late. You need to show up for your guests. And then after this week is done and you look at all those goals, challenge yourself to, to up the ante every single week. And before long, I, I guarantee you within three months, you will be where you want to be. Remember, successful people do what unsuccessful people aren't willing to do. Yeah. It's all about the little things. We say it all the time. It's not about the little things. It's all about the little things. And goal setting is one of those little things that people overlook all the time. So I can't wait to hear how this goes for you. Um, please reach out. You can follow me on Instagram at the little things for stylists. Um, you can also head on over to our website. I'll put the link in our show notes um, and sign up for um, 15 secrets of successful hairstylists. Yes, that'll get you on our mailing list too so you can get our weekly emails. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, go out and make it a great week. And remember, it's all about the little things.